What's up guys? So today I want to show you how you can set up a shortcut, double click it, and it'll open Mulvad Browser for I2P. Now previously I actually wrote some scripts called Star, or it's called I2P-Desktop, and what that does is it automates setting up a shortcut for you where it actually, when you double click this, it starts the I2P router in the background for you so you don't have to manually start and stop it. Then about 10 seconds later, and it waits 10 seconds because you know, it wants to ensure that it's fully connected so that you can actually go to the router console here as we see in this window. Now if you do this, you should probably disable the automatic browser open inside here or otherwise you're going to have Firefox open at the same time. Doesn't really matter, you can just exit the Firefox. The main thing is that we're using Mulvad browser. What we want to do and the great benefit of this setup that I'm going to cover exactly how you can set it up right now is it is actually Tor Browser without Tor. So it's perfect for I2P in that way, in that you get all of the protections that you're used to with Tor Browser. You even have things like safer mode you can go through and you can change it to you know your safer mode on like you would on tour so you have standard level security I could do safer level and then you could see exactly what it disables for you so if you want a safer browser setup possibly and really a uniform browser setup that's one of the benefits of tour is tour browser makes all users look the same with browser fingerprinting at least as close as possible and that benefits users in that they all appear as close to the same as possible. Now, I2P, on the other hand, people are using different browsers. If there was a uniform browser, of course, that would benefit I2P, but that is a lot of work to maintain. So if there ever was a regular browser recommendation, I think that would be beneficial, of course, because that would be a more uniform browser fingerprinting on I2P uh, sites. But anyways, back to the subject at hand, what we're doing is we're going to change the proxy settings here and then I'm going to show you how to edit the script for the I2P-Desktop. If you don't have the I2P-Desktop, you can grab it over on the Giddy Onion, which is linked right in this video description. So take a look at that in Tor Browser. It's a private, anonymous uh, Git server where you can actually contribute things or you could just download and check out what's there. And once you get the i2p-desktop off the Giddy Onion. Uh, use that installer script if you want or you can manually move the scripts around as mentioned in the readme. Uh, set your proxy settings here, manual proxy configuration port 4444. Uh, your IP address is going to be 127.0.0.1 and that's actually localhost so that means you're going to connect to yourself and how that works is the I2P router that starts in the background when you double click this shortcut it actually opens up port 4444 where you connect in and you actually uh, have this router console where you actually connect again at 7667 and slash home. So this is I2P plus. That is the one I recommend for beginners and you know it's good to check them all out. I run I2P D2. I also have an I2P regular Java server or client server and uh, I also have this I2P plus but what's great about I2P plus is there are a lot of enhancements and there also are several working websites that are really great right on the front so if you don't know where to start with I2P it's a great place to start I2P plus so once you install that and have that installed very easy to do just follow the installation it's graphical you just you know run it with Java and then after that you can change those proxy settings like I have here and you'll be able to then edit the script that we're going to edit which is the start dash I2P script so we're going to edit that right now I'm going to show you how I edited it and then all you need to do is place that in slash user slash bin or the installer actually will do that for you. So we know that the shortcut itself, we can also take a look at that. So if you want to learn a little bit about Bash today, stick around. So we go into desktop, we can cat, which means display the I2P desktop. And what that does is it's a file that is this file right here. It allows you to change the icon. So if you edit this icon line here, you can actually change the icon, but it automatically has an icon that comes with the I2P 
desktop setup. And then you take a look at this line, exit equals, and what that means is this is what happens when you double click it. So it actually runs a script called start I2P, which comes with the I2P dash desktop setup. If you've been following this channel with the I2P videos, uh, that is automatically installed for you when you download it and just simply run that installer. And it normally will install an, a LibreWolf browser profile, which is a custom I2P browser profile with LibreWolf. But today I'm talking about Mulvad and how it might benefit. So we can actually take a look at the bottom of this and we see what is actually executed. So what happens is that browser itself that opens after the earlier commands that actually start I2P right here. So each one of these is a variable, these with the dollar signs, and then you can go up to the top and you can see what it actually means, or the value really. But that's what it references. So anytime you see a dollar sign in a script with a word after it, you can actually take a look through that script for that exact little set of characters and then you'll find out where it's called and also what the value is or what it means. So we have all that set up. You don't need to understand all of this uh, because it's already set up for you to automate this. It also stops the I2P router when you close the browser. Now if you want to try out the Mulvad setup, all you need to do is really edit this bottom line here. So the actual original line is this. So this is what you're going to see when you download it. Then all you need to do is put the exact location as you see here now this right here this symbol actually means my home directory so it'll actually automatically go to your home directory and then I downloaded it to my downloads folder and so this is where my browser is so the start browser and you'll find that in the same download so if you download this this is what you're gonna get in return just paste that line there you even use the same you know new tab uh, parameter to open it up to localhost at the port that it is running on. So hopefully this makes sense to you. You don't need to understand everything I'm talking about in this video. All I really want to get across is you can actually take advantage of all the benefits of Tor Browser on the I2P network by downloading Mulvad Browser which was intended for VPN usage, but we can make great use of it on I2P. Then just follow these commands to install it on Linux or follow the Windows commands and you can install it there. So that's all you really got to do. Then you'll have a working Mulvad browser with an I2P setup and you'll have a shortcut where you double click it. It's going to automatically open Mulvad browser but of course you want to ensure you first set those network settings so all you need to do is set up proxy configuration in Mulvad and that's going to route you to your I2P browser console like this window right here so make sure to check out my previous videos on I2P if you're interested in I2P it's really cool that you can do so much with it just like you know Tor you can do a lot with Tor as well but something unique to I2P is Torrents. So if you like BitTorrent, well, I2P is an awesome option for you because it also makes you anonymous. So if you want the privacy to download in private, you know, you don't necessarily want to give away all your hobbies and interests or whatever it is. And you can download Torrents just going right inside Torrents here. I actually just tried to install the Snowflake Donor uh, Blizzard plugin, and I'm having trouble getting that working. That was actually the video I recorded yesterday. So there was supposed to be a video yesterday, but unfortunately, I haven't got that plugin working yet. But I am going to cover more plugins coming up at some point. But we're going to get back to Linux learning as well as privacy and security. So looking forward to that as well as SDR. So let me know what you think in the comments. Are you having trouble with this setup? All you really need to do is install the I2P-Desktop, install the Mulvad browser like this described right here. And after that, set your settings in Mulvad browser like I've done here. Then edit the start-i2p script, which is found in the i2p-desktop uh, profile, which you can find on the Gideon Onion. And that's it.
Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you want to see more about I2P or are you tired of me talking about I2P? I think I2P is great and really it's the future of free speech because as we see around the world, there's even retroactive speech laws. I believe I read that in Canada. So they're actually looking back in time on the internet to come after people who violated a law that didn't even exist at the time they posted. I'll have to reference that again. I might do a video on it, uh, so I don't want to misquote it right now. But thought that was interesting. You know, the future is darknet. You know, think what you might. But if you want, you know, freedom, free speech, things like that, free expression, you should become familiar with I2P and, of course, Tor Browser as well. That's what I got today, guys. Make sure to leave your comments below and like the video, share it with others, and I'll be back later with more on privacy and how to protect your security.